Liquidators are the silent killers of DeFi City. They operate in the shadows, patrolling the block to keep the city moving and earning a pretty penny for doing so. Unlike miners, or validators, liquidators need no capital of their own. This has created a brotherhood of pro executioners backing in from anywhere in the world to keep the city solvent. But things are changing fast. Can these dark enforcers adapt? Or will they be left behind in the dust? Hunting opportunity wherever it hides. This is The Defiant. Unless you were hiding under a rock last weekend, you'll have felt the cold, dead lips of the liquidators kiss as $8 billion and over 1 million traders were liquidated in just four hours. But these were just over-leveraged margin positions on centralized exchanges, nothing to do with DeFi, right? Well, no, because it's all connected, isn't it? Borrowers on lending platforms like Compound are heavily exposed to the volatility of their collateralized assets, which are, of course, traded everywhere. When the market drops, those assets are suddenly worth nowhere near enough to cover the terms of their loan. And boom. Liquidated. Which never feels nice. But you know what is nice? Our sponsors, so do be kind and let them wow you with their wowness. Don't let high gas costs keep you out of Ethereum. At Balancer, you can trade all you want and get most of the gas costs back in your pocket. In their new Bal for Gas campaign, traders are receiving six figures worth of Bal tokens every week. And with version two, Balancer is becoming the one-stop shop for DeFi liquidity. Balancer version two brings stable pools and weighted pools tightly integrated under a single protocol, fast loans, lending via asset managers, and much more. Check it out at balancer.finance. Ava, fun fact, the name is in fact taken from the Finnish word for ghost, is a decentralized open source and non-custodial liquidity protocol on Ethereum. Depositors earn interest by providing liquidity to lending pools, while borrowers can obtain loans by tapping into these pools with variable and stable interest rate options. Deposits in Ava protocol receive A tokens, which accrue interest every second right in your wallet. Seriously, you can watch your balance go up every second. Swap any of your deposited assets at any time to get the best yields on the market. For the developers out there, Ava features access to DeFi building blocks like flash loans and credit delegation. Ava protocol liquidity pools are now available on Ethereum and the sidechain Polygon. Big stuff. Now, back to the main film. Since last year's glorious DeFi summer, liquidation volumes have significantly increased. Just by way of comparison, during last year's Black Thursday back in March, liquidation volume was actually five times lower than last month. In fact, the flash crash in February was far more significant in terms of just the pure dollars being nuked. And when you take a look at overall lending volume, the growth is in line with the overall growth in the crypto market, as you'd expect. So more lending volume means more liquidation volume. Makes sense. But there were still some zingers over the weekend, like this 68 WBTC liquidation with 3.38 million USDC in debt repayment. And that's the thing with crypto. Everything looks fine until suddenly one little thing changes and yeah, that happens. I'm getting wet, people. Yeah, diet, definitely diet. Can we get the real one next time? Now, it's normal to have the market move against you when holding volatile cryptocurrencies, but if there's one big lesson newbies to crypto must learn, it's this. Everything in this space wants to kill you and rip off your head, but you only incur a loss if you sell. Those with diamond hands and a strong stomach have historically been better off in the long run, as long as they can stick the course.
Huddle fam, am I right? Whatever happens, you still have something, which at some point could be worth something again. But when you're liquidated, it's gone. Ow. You gambled, you lost, no give backs. So what exactly are liquidations? What are DeFi liquidations? Decentralized lending protocols such as Aave, MakerDAO, and Compound are big bizzo now, allowing anyone to lend or borrow crypto trustlessly and permissionlessly. The borrower locks their collateral in a smart contract and can then borrow a lesser amount of another asset provided by the lender. And this works just fine when the value of the collateral exceeds the value of the loan, giving borrowers access to working capital without needing to sell what often end up being less liquid assets. Now the thing is, when the value of the underlying collateral drops, rational borrowers are now incentivized to, you know, leg it with the loaned asset, leaving lenders potentially underwater. After all, why return 100 DAI to get back $99 worth of ETH? The natural volatility of crypto means these kinds of situations can happen at jaw-dropping speed. Behold, Safe Moon. <laughs> to mitigate this risk, lending protocols place an additional fee on liquidations, which goes to the liquidators themselves. Anyone can repay the debts of the borrowers and receive a nice bonus for doing so, which keeps the whole system solvent. Under protocol rules, a borrow position can be liquidated once the value of the collateral falls below a predetermined liquidation threshold. Now, because the system is permissionless, anybody on the network is entitled to liquidate these positions. And they do that by paying the debt asset to acquire the underlying collateral at a discount. And in practice, what that means is an absolute butt ton of bots literally climbing over each other for the chance to liquidate you and snaffle that bonus. You can think of them a little bit like enforcers sent out to settle debts as soon as they come to you. If you don't want to be counting the fingers, you haven't got, I suggest you get those guns. Quick! Now all this sounds highly profitable and enticing. Now oh, I'm going to put that down. And lending volume is on the rise as well, which we've already seen. And that would lead you to believe that there's more opportunity out there right now. But as it turns out, the competition for liquidations has also become seriously tight, as the bots themselves become increasingly sophisticated. And we're also now seeing more systems arriving to protect borrowers from being liquidated at all. Oh, bless. Meaning the days of really bumper payouts might well be numbered, but more on that later. So how does one become a liquidator? Now, although the mechanisms in terms of liquidation vary between protocols, the ingredients are essentially the same. You need a bot that monitors pending Ethereum transactions and finds loans eligible for clearing. You need decentralized exchanges that can be used to sell clearing collateral immediately and guarantee the liquidator a certain profit. And you need smart contracts that allow the clearing and sale of collateral to be automatically executed, and this is the important bit, in a single transaction. Now, some protocols provide their own off-the-shelf tools to facilitate this, while others rely on third-party versions. MakerDAO was at the heart of the Black Thursday incident, so it's probably worth taking a quick look at their liquidation mechanism, which occurs in two steps. A bite, and then a bust. A good analogy here is how a car might be liquidated to pay off a debt. First, it's repossessed, and then it's auctioned off to repay the owner's debt. In the maker system, repossession of a loan is triggered by calling the bite, and liquidation is triggered by calling bust on their set of smart contracts. And if you want to go the full Vinnie Jones, then the place to look is Keeper Dow. This is one of them high power jobs, isn't it? We have a great wiki on GitHub explaining how to become a keeper basically someone who manages liquidations and rebalances across a number of different DeFi applications. KeeperDAO maintains a liquidity pool that allows liquidators access to capital to fund liquidation strategies as long as they return it in the same transaction. So that basically means you don't need your own capital, you just need the smarts to operate a bot and then repay any money that you take from them immediately, which is 
quite a challenge. Now, an even bigger challenge for Mr. or Mrs. Keeper is getting stung. Beekeeper, get it? There's a lot about something. The green light triggers the stingometer. By priority gas auctions or PGAs, and we covered those in our MEV episode. Now, it's not uncommon for PGAs to drain most, if not all, of the profit available in arbitrage and liquidations. Keeper Dow claims to solve this problem by incentivizing keepers to collaborate instead of compete. And if it sounds like this is a high-level strategy for high-level coding brains, well, you'd be right. But the world of liquidations is evolving extremely rapidly now. So let's take a look at some of the things coming up. Firstly, Maker is now moving away from a fixed price sale of collateral in SCD to a full collateral auction in multi-collateral DAI. And they will be operating under a new liquidation system casually entitled Liquidations 2.0. Oh yeah. Under this setup, the liquidation penalty is less explicit, taking the form of a minimum bid increment that guarantees some gap between true market price and the price paid in an auction. I think what that basically means is it should be fairer, probably. Now, another interesting protocol is Tracer, who claim to have designed a riskless liquidation mechanism via a slippage reimbursement receipt, rendering the act of liquidation risk-free and the cost to liquidated traders competitively inexpensive. And this means users can trade, oh, good for you, at higher leverage and open positions with minuscule investment sizes. Oh, yes. My humble apes, life is going to get so sweet. Now, Keeper Dow themselves just announced a new product, K Compound. No, it's not the new hot drug on the street. It's a product which allows you, the humble user, to profit off your own liquidation with loans that are monitored and protected by the Keeper Dow, just in time underwriter, Jitu which helps protect borrowers from liquidation. Now, this acts as a kind of friendly middleman, topping up a position if it sort of only vaguely falls below the threshold. But if it happens to fall too far, the Jitu hides that position from the open market and hunts the best deal for you, targeting a 5% profit on the liquidation with a piece of that profit being returned to you. Again, watch the MEV episode to understand how bots hunt everywhere for opportunities, and this is effectively shielding you from those bots. Could be cool. B Protocol takes a very different approach, allowing liquidators to gain priority in the liquidation process by providing a liquidity cushion to the user account when it comes close to the liquidation price. Sounds comfy. Now, we covered Alchemix last week, but here we have a system where you can obtain a loan free from any risk of liquidation whatsoever. Your only debt is time, Watch the Magic Money episode we did last week to understand more about that one. Now, there's a really hot protocol that's been absolutely hoovering up TVL the last few weeks, and that is Liquity. And that allows you to draw interest-free loans against Ether, uses collateral. Loans are paid out in LUSD, which is a USD pegged stablecoin. And you need to maintain a minimum collateral ratio of only 110%. But in addition to the collateral, the loans are secured by a stability pool which contains LUSD and by fellow borrowers who are collectively acting essentially as guarantors of last resort. So as you can see, it's a really kind of innovative and interesting system that's being built here. And finally, the last one here is Ruler Protocol, which is a market-driven lending platform with what they say are non-liquidatable loans, which are fixed rate loans simply requiring you to pay back the loan on time. If you don't, the loan is then considered defaulted and collaterals are forfeited by the borrowers. It accomplishes this through a complicated mechanism of three different tokens, which I won't go into now. But as you can see, liquidations are fast on their way to being Ah, uh, you get it. Now, everything that we've been discussing so far has been in the context of secured lending, where there is a surplus of collateral at stake. But secured lending is simply the first step in building out a decentralized finance ecosystem. Now, it's looking increasingly likely that we will begin to see an ecosystem of credit-based, unsecured lending appear in DeFi. Under these conditions, liquidations will become less prevalent and probably, over time, irrelevant. So. Get it while you can, you crazy galaxy brainers. 
That's it for this week. I have taken way, way more abuse than I was expecting, but I hope this was a hopeful overview of liquidations in all their fluid glory. From the wet side of the tracks, this is The Defiant. Thank you.